it comes down to the job, right? There's fuckers in this room that I know are doing shit on the side while they're supposed to, and they, and they work hard, let alone what's going on in Vayner that work more standard hours and they're doing their own side shit, and I'm cool with it. We did have to put in a side hustle policy because we became vulnerable because so many people were doing shit that some of our client contracts were like, I was actually, but I wasn't mad that like, you know, Sid was working on something for an hour that was, you know, and so the reality is you may, here's my big thing, get out of jails. The theme of today is get out of jails. Self-imposed jails. Kid number one has a rent that he has to pay with his girl at 22 that I'm concerned is too expensive, right? You, you most likely, you most likely can get another job in your field that may be more open to you working after work on your stuff and don't have cynicism and quick trigger blame and thinking that you're working on their stuff. I mean, my dad, doesn't want Wine Library employees to actually have their phone on them in the store because he's scared that in their hours that they work in the store, they're not gonna work for even two minutes when they're looking at their phone. That's my dad. I, on the other hand, have no idea what the fuck anyone's doing. Well, yeah, yeah, I get that. So I get to get out of jail thing. But so like for in this case, in, in my case, it's just like this, I don't want to, I don't want to leave this job because, so, because, um, I, it's more, it's flexible. Like, so don't do your, so, do, so don't do your side stuff. Flexible. Yeah. So don't do your side stuff because there's going to be scrutiny or go to the tippy top and say, I work my face off every minute while I'm here know that I'm doing stuff when I get home instead of watching Netflix. Being in between and guessing okay. is gonna keep you in fear. You only have one of two options, Jack. This, Jackie, this is what's so awesome about life once you get into a binary framework. You either have the, I'm gonna get another job and I'm gonna tell them up front that I work from 6 p.m. on, so just know what you're getting into with Jackie. I'm fucking Jackie and this is how I go. <laughs> or you go to the tippy top in your place that you like right now and say, hey, I know that this has flared up before when I was doing the Airbnb thing. Look at my face, I'm Jackie. From nine to five, I work every minute. When I go home, I work also. Uh, yeah, that's true. God, it, 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 making so simple and like. <laughs> everything is simple. My lack of education and my lack of fear is the reason I'm so successful in business. I only have simple. I'm only simple because it's actually simple. We're incredibly trained and incredibly good at making simple shit complicated, which then fucks us at scale. Oh yeah, that was like, yeah, I've been like thinking about this, like just stressing out of it over it, but. It's yeah, that simple. It. And, if, it. And, it, well, and if I'm, if you're my sister, I'm like, okay, and before you go have that conversation with the top telling them what you do, let's go take 15 interviews and have two jobs lined up in case they look you in the face and say, fuck you. I don't know if it's the thing I want to do. No shit. Of course it's not. You did it because your dad wanted you to. Right. Is your dad in Poland? Yeah, he's in Poland. Perfect. <laughs> so, just tell your dad you're doing it and do something else. All right. What's that? Well, I think you should do something else. Oh, um, yeah. So my idea was right now. I'm. I was thinking. Kidding, maybe not I kidding. Should just. Yeah, I was thinking I should just apply to different entertainment companies and just work there as some, you know, legal, in a, in a legal position. I like, I, Milos, I like what you're doing because I was joking a little bit about the dad thing, but not really. I mean, it was a hot take, but we need to talk here a little bit. But I like the idea of leveraging what you've already invested in. How long have you been in law school? Uh, it's my first year, so I just completed my first semester. So look, the beauty is you're in Atlanta which is becoming the new Hollywood. So there's a ton right. going on. It's, there is potential if you apply to 200 places for somebody wanting to give you an internship or a, a low paying job for the summer or full time if you can handle the both and Eastern Bloc kids tend to be able to handle both things because um, they're not fancy. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it's a great idea to leverage what you've already invested in to get in the door and then once you're the junior man in the legal department, you start working the halls of the agents and the creative people and you start shooting the shit 
and, and over time, no question, could you go from a legal path to maybe being a strategist or a creative if you have that natural talent? Exactly, that was my plan. My only, so what, what would you recommend I do? Apply um, to every to... single entertainment company in Atlanta on LinkedIn, their website, or DMing the founder. Okay, what do you think of, uh, about applying to VaynerMedia? Well, we're not looking for anybody illegal. Okay. Alright. Are you looking to move? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an immigrant, so I don't really have like one place here. I'm just, I was looking whatever I can. But aren't you going to school? Like, won't you have to go back to, like, aren't you in law school? Yeah, I'm in law school. So if I said yes, you would come up here and transfer to a different law school? If I, yeah, if I could get a job there and, and work for you, then yeah. All right, just email me, Gary at VaynerMedia. Uh, and I mean, an entry legal job here, I'm not sure what that pays versus the balance of like how much that takes away from your studies, but you can email me, but let me tell you right now, uh, in the title, put Polish kid looking for a legal job. Um, uh, but I'm telling you right now, Atlanta is fucking loaded if you care about entertainment. Okay. Well do you, if, besides from just applying to places, do you think I should also just hit up people and try to network and call them and... Yes, that's what I said. I said apply on LinkedIn and their website and then DM the founders on Instagram. Okay. Do you like hip hop music? Yeah, I actually used to do rap in Poland. Like I actually was uh, doing concerts and stuff. Can you rap right now for me a little bit? Um. Let's see. Um, Do you need a beat? Uh, uh, no, I got it, I got it. Okay. Um, jeśli wszyscy już ciebie zwątpili, pokażę się mnie Lili. Uh, oh, damn, I, I'm, too, I'm too stressed out right now. I get I'm it, bro. Like me. I get it. Everything's stressful in life. Um, but yeah. Um, thank you very much for calling me. And listen I, to me. I'm listen gonna... to me. If you love hip hop and you're in Atlanta, and and you've got some legal ability, but you're also Eastern European rugged, I promise you the South Side of Atlanta will fuck with you. I would hit up the best right. entrepreneurs, whether they're Jeezy or Two Chains, bro. It's the same advice to everybody. When you are dreaming of being in something, the entryway is either praying through resume or hitting up decision makers that love humility and bravado. Right. Like the last kid that just called, Dana White, the same thing for 2 Chains and Jeezy and Coach K. You understand? Yes. If you don't judge yourself for being inefficient, you become efficient. I might be one of the most inefficient people of all time, but because I don't judge it, I actually become remarkably efficient. If people realize they spend more time dwelling on being inefficient than actually the efficient work, everything would change. I've never thought of it that way before. No shit. Th that's why you asked it first. Well, there you go. <laughs> Hannah, I'm being really serious with you. I'm gonna sit on this one for it's gonna help a lot of people. Everybody judges themselves arbitrarily. All of a sudden, everybody thinks they're an efficiency expert on their own selves. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is driving home insecurities and judgment on yourself on something that doesn't matter. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean try not to get more efficient, but just doing what you can, like having a calendar and doing the best you can is just fine. The second you don't get to something on your calendar and you beat yourself up is the second you're inefficient. Mm -hmm. You're macro inefficient. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you can't, like, I was supposed to be in Singapore right now, but coronavirus came out, I decided not to go, right, because mm -hmm. of angst at the kids and mom level, I was like, fuck it, I'll stay. Now I'm here, and we, a couple things have happened where I have a bunch of pockets of time, I just sat with the admins this morning, and we're scrambling to like make it efficient as possible. We should have a great system in place where we absolutely know what my 43 priorities are, but we don't but we kind of do, mm -hmm. and it's kind of in my head, and it's kind of in their head, and over the next 48 hours, I'm either gonna make it really efficient, high impact on the time I had, or not, but on Wednesday morning, whether we did or didn't, I'm not gonna give a fuck, because it's over. Mm -hmm. The dwelling that people put on themselves around efficiency is overwhelming to me, 
and ludicrous at best and dangerous at worst.